Hello. In this video, we're going to take um, the try accept example we built and then show how we can now um, loop that structure in order to continually ask for an input until it's something valid. So let's start off with talking about what we did in our previous video. What we did was we set up this situation with a try accept um, finally so that if the user inputted a number and it wasn't a valid integer value, um, when it crashed on this casting line, it would jump down to the accept and then just set our num to 10. Um, and we added this finally just to understand that we can have this finally code block in. And the finally code block is kind of where you finally wrap things up. So what happens is if I run this over here and we're going to say Python 3 try accept loop.py, if I put in a number that's valid, like let's say 15, notice it says, inputs the number, casts it successfully, then prints thank you for the number, and then it skips the accept and comes down and runs this finally structure down here. And then the, the prints the num and ends the program. If I run it again and I say input a number and I put in cat, which we know is a problem, what happens? Well, it comes in here, it tries this, takes an input, it tries this, and this is where we have the error. So this fails. And typically, if it wasn't in this try structure, what would then happen is the program would just completely crash, but we have an accept. And what that means is that it jumps directly from line four to here and then prints bad number, setting it to 10. We set num to 10, then it prints out the finally, and then we print out num and end program. So we kind of are successful in stopping the program from crashing. But what happens if we want to ask the user again? That is, um, you know, I input a bad number, I'm going to say, that's invalid, give me another number. Well, we can use a while loop for that. And we're going to set what's called an infinite loop and a break structure to break out of it only when we're successful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this finally here. I'm going to remove this number. And all I'm going to do right now is, if this is a situation here, I'm just going to say bad number. I'm going to say that isn't a valid number. Try again, right? And now we're going to print out the num and end program. So if I run this now, there's going to be no difference. But basically, if I end up a number like cat, you know, it says that isn't a valid number. Try again. Then I print out num, which gets the value cat. Notice because the casting failed, that's OK. So what can I do here? Well, what I do is I'm going to highlight all of this code. I'm going to hit tab once to put it inside a code block. And I'm going to put this inside a while loop. And I'm going to say while, I could say a couple things here. If I say while true, this is what's called an infinite loop. Because basically, um, this is going to loop everything inside this code as long as it's true. So it's going to come in here. We're going to run the code. And when we get to the bottom, we check the while condition. If true, we repeat. So basically, I'm going to check the while condition. If it's true, I'm going to come back up to the top and repeat. So now if I come in here and run my program, I'm going to have a bit of a problem. Because notice, input a number. And now I put in a valid number, input a number. I put a valid number, input a number. I put a valid number. And this is going to go on forever. If I put an invalid number, I'm going to, I'm going to run the accept. But again, when I get to the bottom of this while code block, which is this section here, it comes back up and runs again. So this actually works pretty nicely with the in that it, if I input an invalid number, it says try again, but I want it to leave the program or leave this while block if I'm successful. And that's where we can use something called a break. So let me just break out of this program in here. Okay, so I just had to pause and break out of that program there. So we're going to use a break structure. And what a break structure does is a break will look for the most immediate loop and exit it as soon as it reaches it. So if, for example, let me just show you, for example, if I put the word break here, it might have given me, yeah, it gives me an error in this case. If I come down here at the bottom and I put the word break, so what's going to happen now is break is a special command that will look for the most immediate loop and it will exit the immediate loop. So in this case, if I look at the break and I say, okay, which loop are you inside of? You're inside this while loop. It's going to stop exactly where it is and it's going to exit the loop. So now if I come in here and I run this, I input a number and I put 10. 
and it's successful because it hits this break and exits the loop. But notice it's also successful if I input something invalid. So this is how I get out. And the only time I want to get out of this loop is once someone has successfully inputted a valid number. So we're going to actually place this inside the try. Because remember, the way a try structure works is that it's going to try it. And as soon as it runs into a problem, it stops where it is and goes to the accept. So the only way it's going to make it to this break is if I input a valid number. So if I run this again now, and I put a number like 10, thank you for the number. If I run it again, and I put a cat, I put in fish, I put in 6.5. Notice what's happening is every time it reaches this line and it can't cast it properly to an int, it jumps to the accept, and then prints out that's an invalid, that isn't a valid number, gets to the end, while true, it comes back up to the top. And there it is. Now we have a nice little structure for for taking the input of a number but managing those bad inputs um, in a way that's efficient. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.